Well, welcome everybody to the show. Um, and so we're just trying to give an update to the various things that are going on because I get these phone calls uh, every day about what are we doing about X. And so we're going to go through X, Y, and Z today. So the first thing we're going to go through is uh, where the essential and non-essential suits are. We're going to spend one or two minutes on that. Then we're going to spend about 10 minutes on uh, mask updates and uh, in public schools because that's the next fight. And then we're going to talk about vaccination requirements for uh, the uh, VAX information for people who are mandating consumers. And then uh, the last uh, hurrah will be whether or not we can stop some of these mandates on uh, by employers. So starting with the easy stuff first, uh, we are going to say that we go to, let me see if I can share this with you. Uh, this is the latest and greatest um on the it doesn't look like i'm gonna be able to do this we're still learning how to, i don't do these things often enough to make it easy but uh, as you may know at the beginning of this thing we started filing a lot of lawsuits for various organizations that say that they're essential they should be allowed to continue the last version of that we filed a lawsuit for nursing home residents that were being abused by uh, uh, nursing homes that wouldn't allow loved ones in. That's still going on, uh, but our lawsuit on that was settled because the Texas legislature has uh, cut off a lot of those claims with one of the more recent laws. Um, what's remaining is about 15 or so bars uh, that had sued the TABC. TABC is, of course, going to war against any bar that was open for a certain time. Um, and so that is actually still alive. That's before the 13th Court of Appeals, and we're going to have a, an oral hearing on that next month to decide um, whether or not the TABC's rules are reasonable. One of the reasons we're going through this history is to give other people time to get on board, So because what everybody wants to talk about is the vaccinations. So we're going we're gonna to get there. It's, I'm going to take about 10 minutes to get there. So in the, in the TABC suit, uh, they have about, uh, the TBC said was a standalone bar was dangerous. But if you took that same space and you put it inside of Chili's, well, that's not dangerous. Or if you put a food truck in the parking lot, then that was not dangerous. Of course, this is all absurd, it's irrational, so we filed a lawsuit on that. Um, and of course, uh, Chris Pallone and the rail is your modern day Sam Adams. Uh, trying to fight that. And of course, the TABC recently decided to take away his liquor license. We're still fighting that. But that is more than a year old. That fight's going on, and that will be heard uh, oral hearing pretty soon. So then we had the Fort Worth ISD. And I want to see if I can, um, if I can share the screen on this. But, um, and I just don't know that I can. So it doesn't look like I can do that. From where I am right now. The, the, the first big foray into the mask world uh, started actually last year. Jennifer Trigger, Trigger and some friends uh, paid me to do some, some work gathering information. They gathered a lot of open records requests and they found that, uh, that for, and the reason Fourth ISD has gone so well is because we started planning on this some time ago. We have emails from Fourth ISD school board members saying we need to have a policy. Then we have emails that say the policy must be voted on. And then we have a vote, we have in the minutes, a vote by the school board to implement a COVID policy. They weren't just letting the superintendent do whatever he wants to, which of course is dereliction of their duty. So the Fort Worth did the right thing up until this very last part. Once they had a policy, then they, then they said, well, if you're gonna change the policy, we have to vote, which is true. And then they had an executive session uh, in which, after which the Scribner came out, superintendent and said, oh, we've changed the policy. So even though they admitted multiple times that they had to have policies uh, that were, had to be voted on, and when it came time to do that, they didn't do it. So kind of set up for a Texas Open Meetings Act uh, problem. And then we have GA38, and GA38 is the executive order by Greg Abbott that said uh, no public schools have to, can require masking. So you have this, this executive order, and then of course the school districts say, hey, that's too far, you can't do that. Uh, the problem is that for the last year plus, they've been saying we need to mask up because the governor says so. You cannot take a position that's convenient for you and, and use that and say an and argument, the governor's uh, executive orders are law, 
over and over and over. And then when the governor says, and this law is law two, and say, hey, wait a minute, I don't like that. So I'm going to do this cafeteria style. You can't do that. Either the governor's orders are law or not law. Uh, take your pick. And you guys took your pick when you've been using this the last year. So that's a problem. Uh, so we had that before the court of appeal or before the district court, uh, Judge Chuck, 141st. Uh, granted our TRO, and then we had about two weeks before the temporary injunction hearing. The way this works is that you file your, your lawsuit, and then you have a temporary restraining order. So that's kind of the first beginning uh, issue where you have a little hearing. Then you have another hearing a little bit later that says, okay, everybody bring all of your evidence. We're going to have a big fight. We're going to have an hours-long hearing. And then at the end, we're going to decide whether or not there should be an injunction that, that that controls everything or the status of the players until you can really have the trial. All that to say, we had this long hour, hours long temporary injunction hearing. And it was really funny. You had an expert uh, on the stand saying, look, these things don't really affect teaching very much. Uh, it's not a problem. But every time opposing counsel would get up, they'd take their mask down, uh, showing that in fact, communication is damaged. Uh, the idea that you can have a third grade teacher trying to teach a third grade student how to spell isosceles while closing your while your mouth is covered and the, and the child's mouth is covered is absurd. So that's just absurd. And, and, then, and then you had another expert that said that he didn't know anything about Sweden and that experiment. Just in case you don't know, the nation of Sweden, 1.9 million kids did not mask up, did not close their schools, and they had zero COVID deaths due to COVID, or zero deaths due to COVID, zero. There are people, the same number of kids died in the year before as they did the year of, never a problem. The second level question is, also, oh, but all about these parents, all these, all these teachers that got COVID from that. Well, the nation of Finland, right next door, they did not uh, have their schools open. There's very little to no child teacher interaction. And they had, as, as a profession, teachers got COVID uh, at uh, the same rate as any of their profession, just like they did in Sweden. So I don't care what you hear about any other study. What you need to remember is number zero. That's the number of deaths to kids for, for, that were in open schools without masks, the entire nation of Sweden. And no more COVID occurrences for teachers than in a nearby nation, with very similar makeup that had closed schools. So all of their garbage is just garbage. Every time they want to talk about a, a study, you just remember that. So the studies so often, um, the studies so often talk about, well, we did this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and it diminished the COVID, but they don't break out the mask. The best mask studies um, basically come out and say, and then there was one in, in Denmark uh, that came out and said, we really don't know how much of an impact it has. I saw another one for restaurants that said it's 1.8. Uh, percent. The reality is the use of masks probably has about, in one study I saw, 1.8% decreased COVID. That sounds legitimate because it's going to only have an impact whenever you have COVID and you're going to get it, give it to somebody else by sneezing on them, and instead the mask catches that. But a lot of things have to be different. So it, it probably has a very small positive check, but not much. And then you have to balance that out against the value. Uh, what I know is that Texas schools support football. They spend millions of dollars in football every single year. You're going to have one to two to three deaths of, of high school students due to football and innumerable, uncountable physical ailments due to football. We still decide to have football. I see a bike rack in front of every school. We don't say if it possibly impacts somebody, we stop it. We, we take a value at that. In this case, uh, we know that the value of, of requiring masks is very destructive to education and it has no bearing. It reminds me of the old joke of some the cop walks up to, to a uh, uh, guy that's on the, on the ground in a, in a dark parking lot. He says, what are you doing? I'm looking for my keys. Oh, where's your car? My car's over there. Well, did you drop your keys over there? Well, yeah, I dropped my keys over there. Why are you looking here? Uh, because this is where the light is, okay? That's what mask use is. It's something you can control to a degree, but it has no real bearing on anything. Anyway, so that mask, uh, the, the, the Fort Worth ISD uh, injunction was appealed immediately. Um, and because of they appealed it, and it's a school district, a government entity, then our injunction went away. We immediately filed a motion, uh, in, an emergency motion to protect the rights of the parties, which you can do in the appeals court. 
and the appeals court uh, gave that to us. And so that's why you don't have masks being worn in fourth ISD. Now, fast forward a little bit. This last Friday, TEA finally woke up uh, and said uh, no mask use. So they've been saying we don't know what's going on because it's all loosey goosey and all these chaos and, uh, and rebellion going on. So no mask use, uh, real guidance until last, last Friday. Today, as we speak, TEA says no mask in schools. So all you school districts, they're doing the wrong thing. I don't expect the TEA to come after you because the TEA doesn't ever do anything like that. The only, that they don't spend their time doing the right thing. They usually spend their time doing the wrong thing. Uh, but they've been browbeaten into it, I'm sure, by the person who is in charge of them. So um, TEA has said that you can't have masks in. State law in the form of Governor Abbott's uh, executive order GA 38 says no mask. But I can tell you what's happening right now in the city of Dallas and Fort Worth and Dallas ISD. For those of you who don't know this one, we'll do a recap. Uh, JJ Koch was thrown out of commissioner's court uh, by Clay Jenkins, who decided to show how powerful he was by issuing an impromptu uh, sua sponte order. Nobody, get, everybody has to wear a mask. Um, we filed suit for JJ Koch and then uh, Clay Jenkins brought in and said, "Now oh, your GA 38 is no good. So then Governor Abbott, Governor Abbott showed up. Uh, and of course, his little friend, the state of Texas, you know, with the government arm, uh, legal arm is Ken Paxton. So he showed up. Meanwhile, some parents showed up and intervened that say that, well, our kids are medically fragile and they need their mask. Didn't, they didn't need them the week before that when they were uh, going to the grocery stores or anything like that, but that's okay. And so we've then recently filed uh, an intervention for uh, the parents that are being abused. And right now in Dallas ISD, I've got a pair of parents, a pair of kids that have been told that by, by, by teachers that they're endangering people and don't care about people. They've uh, been told one by one of the kids uh, that I hope you die. Uh, and, and his parent is, um, is part of a Facebook group that, that's basically, their, their goal is to browbeat kids into submission. Uh, the kids were put into the library and isolated, and then they, and then this Dallas Dallas ISD school they constructed a plexiglass barrier around that until the parent complained. The fire department came out and said, "No, you can't do that, dude." So that was crazy, um, and it goes on and on. Uh, irrespective of how you feel about masks in schools, nobody should be walking up to a young child and saying, "You hate kids, and you hate people, and you want people to die." You shouldn't be saying things like, uh, you know, isolating and quarantining in a room by themselves. They put them in a room and they slowly took kids out until they're the only, the only person in the room by themselves, not being educated. Why? Because these people just, they, and this is irrespective of G38, irrespective of the TA, TEA's own guidance. That's going on. That went on yesterday. So for those of you in Dallas, there's your Dallas ISD uh, caring about people. So, um, I think that's everything in the mask world. So um, now let's talk about uh, vaccine uh, passports. And what we mean by that is anytime, and we're going to divide this, this fight into two different fights. The first one is for clients. Uh, if you are getting services from somebody, GA39 says that they not, cannot require you to, uh, to have a vaccine. And they cannot require you to uh, wear a mask generally. So now people are just blatantly doing this irrespective of what the state law is. Um, and so those people should sue. That's just my opinion. Now, I'm not telling you that you have a suit that you personally watching this video have a suit. What I'm saying is you ought to look at it, visit with me or a like-minded attorney who's interested in fighting that. And then you can talk about doing that. I'm going to go back just a little bit and talk about the, the financing on the, on the ISD suits. Uh, we, have, we have filed suits in Dallas. Uh, Richardson, Dallas, the same suit. Uh, we couldn't do Plano because Plano actually was not masking at the time, um, and they're not in Dallas County. We have one, of course, in Fort Worth. We filed last night, and night before last, in Austin, and we also filed in Crowley ISD. And and these ISDs are doing various things wrong. They're not all cut and paste. You have to figure out what exactly they're doing wrong. Did they vote on it? If an if an ISD trustee voted to uh, to give carte blanche authority to the superintendent, then you don't need him, and you should file a motion to, re to remove him, uh, a complaint to remove him, and, that, and that's a, a simple thing to do. May or may not be successful, depending on what your, what your judge thinks, uh, but you can challenge. You can actually challenge a 
school trustee who votes to, to take an illegal action. That's a thing. Uh, chapter 87 of the Texas Local Government Code. Um, back to vaccines. If you are a person who wants to go to school, and this has come up a dozen times in the last week or so, UNT is doing a lot of this. Uh, I know other school districts are doing this. And when I say school districts, I mean, what I mean is uh, colleges, state colleges. And state colleges should not be requiring you to have a vaccine or show that you're vaccinated. And what some of the schools are doing, instead of they're, they're trying to play games and they'll say, well, we're not going to require you to have a vaccine, but we're going to torture you. You've got to have a, a test every single week or every, twice a week, as one person quoted to me. Uh, if you get in front of a school that's requiring you to be tested uh, once or twice a week, that's excessive. I would say that as a compromise measure, I would say once a semester, but it's really kind of nonsense. And the reason we know it's nonsense is because they're requiring these things, even of people who already have the COVID, vac COVID antibodies. And I want to harp on this for just a minute. You see these nonsense colleges or uh, uh, hospitals uh, that are saying, oh, we have no capacity. We have no capacity because we are, uh, we don't have, these people are all it's full, full of COVID. Okay. Hospitals are kind of like restaurants. They have a fixed set of tables. When they have capacity, it doesn't necessarily mean the restaurant's tables are all full. It means they only have enough waiters to take care of these areas. The hospitals are like that. They send people home when they're slow. Their capacity is not due to the number of beds. Their capacity is based on the number of nursing and medical staff to take care of those folks. And we know, we know for a fact that these people have plenty of capacity if they would simply allow nurses to work whenever they have COVID antibodies. Now you could also look back and say, aren't these the same nurses that worked all last year um, heroically and took care of people uh, without a vaccine? Vaccine? Yes, they are. They're the same ones that already have been many a times, uh, already contracted COVID and have antibodies. And yet you've got uh, these hospitals that are saying you've got to and make sure that they have the, the vax before you let them come back and work. That's not science, okay? And if you, don't, if you think that's science and you don't know science, the best immunity is going to be the folks that have the antibodies. It's not going to be a, a, a brand new uh, crazy vaccine. It's not a normal vaccine. It's not going to be an organ. It's not going to be uh, anything else. Yet. If, if you've got COVID antibodies, that's the best thing because you're not going to need boosters every few minutes. And if you wanted to have a test that said, I want to test you every two months to make sure you still have, still have the COVID antibodies, then that's fine. But don't tell me that you're having struggles and pretend like you're all this. I've got one picture that I'm not going to show you because the person who took it doesn't want to show me, but, but I may get permission for that at some point to show you that one of, the, one of our local physicians that, that tells everybody that they're so busy. She's, we, got, we have video of inside the hospital. Uh, we have video uh, pictures of her sitting back and relaxing and yucking it up. Um, it's simply not true that they're that they don't have any room for you at the hospital. So fast forward back to the uh, the forced vaccinations of colleges. If you are in that boat, then what you need to do is you need to get together with a bunch of other people from that uh, from that college because you're going to all have similar facts um, and and then. You can set up a different consultation with me and we can talk. Um, it, it's, it's generally going to be five or $10,000 um, to start this thing. Uh, and of course, I want you to succeed. So I'm, I'm just going to have to make sure that my people don't starve. But um, it's not free. It's not contingent. But it's not unlimited either. And people, I've heard people say Warren's doing this for the money. Yeah, I, I do things for money, but this is not what it's about. Uh, I've been doing things that are crazy lawsuits for a long time. Uh, so anyway, the... Now let's talk about, so back, finish up on colleges. Um, you should win that. We should win that. Uh, and I don't think that the colleges are actually going to do anything. When people have come in on employer mandates or, or, or uh, college mandates for the VAX, I always want to look at exactly what they've been told and exactly what the, the documentation is. In many cases, the documentation says, uh, you may be terminated or you may have some disciplinary issues, but it doesn't say you're going to be terminated and it doesn't say you're going to be disenrolled from the college. Uh, I would feel very comfortable uh, with a lawsuit in Texas against a, 
uh, college that is telling you, especially a state college, uh, that is that is going to tell you that you're that you can't be that you can be disenrolled or, or harped on. And I would say even a, a, a private college because they take federal dollars and uh, GA 39 says if you're taking public money, then you have to comply. Um, now I'll go back since we're covering everything all at one time. Uh, I'm also talking to a couple of private schools, private um, Christian schools and private non Christian schools. Uh, depending on what you signed and what the contract that you signed, they they may have told you we're going to do crazy, stupid things because we are over the top zealous mask advocates. Um, in which case you were, you were warned. They may not have. If they didn't, then then you may have a case. We want to look at the documentation what you agreed to, uh, and I can tell you that I'm in contact with a couple of schools on these issues. Uh, last but not least. And this is the big one. Every time I think I've reached the next level of can I be busier? Or can these these cases get any harder? Um, it seems as though uh, a, a new level has been revealed. So um, just talked to a gentleman who's working for a large engineering firm. Uh, and he has documents to say if you don't sign up and let them know sometime in the next X number of days, uh, then uh, then you will be in violation of their rules. And that particular set of rules did not say that he was going to be terminated. So he has to make a decision. Is he going to reveal himself as a mask denier? In a, in a, uh, uh, there are legitimate reasons, many legitimate reasons for not wanting to take the vax. Um, one of which is that it's not a normal vax. It's, it's a strange uh, chimera. It's a, it's, you're telling the body to do something it's never done. It's not the thing, kind of thing we've done before. This is not a normal vaccine. Uh, so, so People say, well, you've taken vaccines before. That's not the same thing. Uh, in fact, one of the problems is that a lot of the nursing, a lot of the uh, nursing staff in these, in these, college, these hospitals know that this is not a normal kind of, uh, uh, not, a, not a normal vaccine and, and hasn't had the long-term testing. And they're uh, leery about setting themselves up for that. Um, you should see the red blood cells, vessels, uh, red blood cells, uh, microscopically what they look like. They're engorged and they're, it's a strange deal. Um, I'm not going to say that you shouldn't take the vax. You should take the vax. I'm going to tell you that you know, and my, I have par parents and friends that have taken it and been fine. I also know two people that were fully vaxxed and died. So you know, that's, those are facts. Those are not subject to interpretation by Facebook or anybody else. Um, but all this gets to is you have to make a decision on whether or not you're going to really fight this thing. I would lay low if it was me. Now I'm okay. Be aware. I'm a risk taker. I'm an attorney telling people about things on the website. When I was a young man, I rode a motorcycle. I, I have taken risks in my life. And if you are not a risk taker, then you have to figure out, Oh, I have a risk either way. I'm going to take the vax, which some people say has no risk at all. Uh, although I know people who are dead. Um, but I also know people that have gotten the vaccine and been fine, right? So I would say you're taking a risk either way. That's just my opinion. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. But if you want to take the vax, then great. If you don't, then you need to make a decision on, on how much leadership you're going to show. I can tell you that in every major organization, there are a whole bunch of people that think, you know, I just assume not take that vax. I just soon let other people that are really vulnerable take it and develop the long-term plans on that and long-term studies on that and be part of that experiment. Um, and if you want to do that, then more power to you. Uh, if you want to say, no, I'm going, going to do it as long as it's easy, then get together with like-minded people. There are people, for example, in all these ISD suits that have said, I'll be happy to give money. I'll be happy to serve the witness even, but I don't want to be a plaintiff. That's fine too, but you need to get together with the people that agree with you and need to say, do we have a case? And I can tell you that there are rules and laws that suggest that once you have been hired, a, a, um, an organization cannot require brand new regulations on, on medical, unless it's actually related to your, to your work, to your business. Now they are going to say that it is. But that's poppycock. That's what we call it in, in the legal world. We call that poppycock. It's not related to your business because it's universally true all over everywhere. It's just true everywhere. 
So uh, your business does not tell you that you need to, write, to wear a seatbelt. Uh, your business does not tell you, ask you what kind of toothpaste you, you uh, have. Your business doesn't do a lot of things. So this is not simply a business uh, issue. And I'll give you one more little jewel here uh, that you're going to hear a lot of the uh, authorities talk about. We'll talk about Jacobson versus Massachusetts. And I'm just covering all these things because I wanted to get through all these things before I, it all at one time. Jacobson versus Massachusetts was a smallpox vaccine in 1904. Okay. And the state of Massachusetts, along with that, another 10 or so states mandated the use of uh, the smallpox vaccine. But they didn't do it with an executive order. They didn't do it by trying to say that, that employers need to do this. They had a law. And people will say, what's the difference? Well, the difference is that you have people that have stakeholders that represent individuals that have some concerns. Uh, and they, they make the, the, the thing less bad. There are levels of wrong, right? There is levels of wrong. Uh, the school districts can can vote to do the wrong thing, or they can just say the school superintendent can do whatever he wants, and then he can do the wrong thing. Um, you can you can have I'm going to require masks with transitions with, within classes, so that somebody is liable to sneeze. All these young kids that don't know how to avert their sneeze when they're sneezing, they wear a mask while they're between classes. That would be less wrong. My big deal in the masking schools is once you're all sitting down and, and the third grade teacher is trying to teach you how to spell isosceles, you should be able to, to look at that teacher in the face and you should be able to, the teacher should be able to see you. Um, so that's, that's my big deal, just like it was back when we had essential, non-essential. My problem is that people should be able to work. So, uh, but back to Massachusetts versus Jacobson. In, in uh, Jacobson, what they did was they said, it's a law. And there was a fine of $5 if you didn't comply with the law, which is more than $5 today, but it's not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and there were exemptions for medical. Uh, and so uh, there may or may not have been exemptions for, for religious. But the point is that it, it was not crazy over the top executive director, executive order stuff. So if our state legislature wants to, to do it that way, then at least we could argue that we were represented and if somebody wants to be involved in your medical uh, requirements, they can at least pass, they can at least bother to use all three levels of all three branches of the government. They can use the legislature to pass a law. Then they can have a court system that enforces the law. So and and, and they, we can and we have a an executive branch that will that will enforce it and then a judiciary that that uh, mets out the punishment. Do it the right way. And if you're going to do the wrong thing, at least do it in the right process because the answer will be less bad. Um, so that's that one. Now, I'll tell you that there is hope, um, irrespective of all these other things that are going on, the Texas legislature is in its third special session right now. Um, and that third special session, the legislature, as part of the governor's call, can talk about these things. Uh, you should call your legislator, legislature, legislator, and tell the, that person that you want to make sure that a, an employer cannot fire somebody on this issue. Now, some of you will say, Warren, you're all about local control. That is my default position. It is. There's no doubt about it. And my default position is not that I depend upon executive orders to do things. But this is the problem. Um, and this is my metaphor. I use metaphors and analogies, whichever. I'm not sure what the difference is. Anyway, I'm, if you wake up after driving your car and you find that your car is moving through the cornfield while you fell asleep, you cannot simply twinkle your nose and be back on the road. You're, you are off in the cornfield. You've got to turn the car and you've got to get out of there. So you have no choice. This is where we are. We got here through government overreach. We got here because we didn't do things the right way. And here we are. So if we got here this way and the governor gives us an executive order to get us back on the road, I'm all about it. I will always, all of my actions have always supported more freedom and the ability to, to, to live your life. I've been consistent and I'm going to use whatever tools I can to support that. Um, I'm not sure if we have a way of uh, looking at questions that may have popped up on the feed. I don't know that I've got a feed that I can look at. So is there a question that, that I can look at? I don't know. Um, the no? Good. Okay. So, uh, anything else? Uh, we're going to have a 
I've been told that there's, I'm appearing at a rally at Caps Park on September 28th at 4 o'clock regarding uh, medical issues of this nature. Uh, other people will be there, including Tim O'Hare um, and uh, gubernatorial folks. So we hope you can join us at Caps Park at 4 o'clock on the 28th. And you can look for that if you'd like. Um, I'm sure I did not answer all of the questions, but I, the, the end result on all of the folks that are looking at employers and uh, employer mandates is I want you to get together with other like-minded folks. Call me all at once if you can. That means you have to show some vulnerability to your fellow coworkers. But unless you're going to go it alone, you're going to have to do that. Uh, and what we'll do is a Zoom call. I had a Zoom call with 60 people from the, the Valley uh, and some ISDs not too long ago. So we can do big Zoom calls. We can do small Zoom calls. And, I'll, and then we'll outline it uh, in detail. And at that point, then I'll start working for you. Um, None of these cases are going to be easy, but I can tell you if you don't fight back, then you'll either, if they, if they think it's just you, if you're the only one, then you are likely to lose your job. But if you can get together and you can show that it's it's not working, um, then, uh, and, and if you have some some people that are unhappy, uh, then then maybe. Is there a need to sue the schools anymore with the TA guidelines? Um, there is a need to sue the schools with TA guidelines. Um, because they, most of them didn't do it right, and they've learned nothing from it. They, they would tell you right now in Fort Worth, you've got a couple of school district school uh, school trustees that are saying we should just do what we want. Okay, that we will have you in front of the court on contempt if you do that. But they've learned nothing. They've really learned nothing until ordinary people commonly understand that masks are not particularly valuable not helpful and this over the top you're going to kill people telling small children that they're that they're the problem you know it, as somebody else has said you know that they took their their uh their sinus medicine so they wouldn't have their allergies but nobody else took it so they didn't work you know it's crazy um the, the masks are not effective for children in those kinds of environments nothing says that they are and the people that are trying to misuse the studies to show this, you should understand that you can never trust them because they'll lie to you. They'll lie to you. And all these superintendents and all they, they just power trips. These are, and I can tell you that I know a number of teachers that have contacted me and say, it's not me. And, and I know that. So please, if you're a teacher, you don't need to excuse yourself to me. I know it's not you. It is a few teachers that are crazy and they love the power and they shouldn't be teachers or at least they should be severely punished because they don't understand it. And for all of those parents that want to talk about, well, you just don't care about kids. You got to check yourself. You just got to check yourself. It, the, the zero kids, zero kids in Sweden. And, and there may be at some point an actual child that dies of COVID, but we don't shut down football when somebody dies of COVID. We don't shut down. You don't send your kids to school to be babysat. And every year, and this is where I would really get upset, in Fort Worth right now, true story, you can go look at it right now, the seventh grade mastery for math is 3%. 3%. You can't tell me, if they would focus a little bit less on CRT and social emotional learning and whatever courageous conversations, whatever they want to talk about, if they would focus a little bit less on masking and a little more on math, Maybe they're, they're, they'd have actual self-esteem rise because the kids would know something and you wouldn't have to fool them into feeling good about themselves. Right now, Fort Worth ISD and all these school districts are stealing the future of these kids by making sure, by making sure that they're spending time on things that are not going to help them in the future. These kids are never, those kids are going to really struggle to ever get caught up you know, with all the people in all these other countries for engineering jobs. You just can't take years out of a life. Anyway, I can go on my, I can continue on my rant, but I'm not going to. Stage um, the stage is the Dallas ISD. Okay, at Dallas ISD, again, that was a long, torturous uh, uh, series of events. So Dallas ISD is in the appeal stage. Now, because uh, we filed this intervention right before the, the, the injunction, the the trial judge gave an injunction to, to stop the enforcement of GA38. 
but they did so right before we intervened with our parents that are that are uh, medical choice parents. So we need to file in a in the appeals court a similar document to what we filed in Fort Worth, but transferred with our our new facts. And we're in the process of doing that now. Um, and so we will hope that the Fifth Court of Appeals um, it will grant that. And I want everybody to understand that there is nobody who can argue we're going to lose this. Ultimately, this will eventually get to the Supreme Court and all of these school districts that are rebellious little children acting like the people they're supposed to be educating are going to find that they're wrong. And they're going to they're going to say, oh, they're going to blame it on the big bad judges. No, no, it's, they're not. The, the law on this is clear. It's clear. And if I if I had these things working the way I'd like to, uh, the Bear County uh, event, the, the Supreme Court sent out a state order that says for the last year and a half or so, we've all agreed that the, that the, the Governor Abbott is in charge. The governor is in charge of these issues. And it is unlikely that that's going to change. Okay. It's been clear. It's been telegraphed. Even the TEA is doing it now. No school district has any excuse for spending one more dollar on litigation, not one. And the fact that they still are means you should replace all of those people. Because what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, we were right. But the judges, those mean judges, um, did, uh, did, did these bad things. And so it's the judge's fault. No, no, no. You don't get to do that. This is telegraphed to you. Everybody knows it. Every attorney knows it. Everybody who has a brain or half a brain, even for the case of the Dems, that have looked at this thing, know that they're in the wrong. And they're just playing games with their constituents so they can get a good all the tea parties and, and, and sound like that they did the right thing. It was just the Republican judges. It's baloney. It's baloney. This is not a matter of picking what studies you want. This is a matter of just reading the law. And, and if they didn't actually vote on it, then they're doing even worse. School district ISD trustees are not supposed to be just mere cheerleaders for the administration. They've got to get out and lead. And if they're not doing it like they are, like, like in Fort Worth and in Dallas and in Richardson, then you need to take them to task. And you just say, what are you doing here? Why are you stealing the future of my children by focusing on things that are not math, reading, science, basic stuff? And don't, don't listen to these hospitals because they're, they're, they're full of garbage too. Uh, I was asked about the federal, empl federal employees. Um, I have a number of federal employees that, are, that have contacted me, and a number of them are going to be great plaintiffs. Uh, I am hopeful that we're going to get feedback from Biden and that he winds up retracting a lot of what he said. I do know that a number of uh, federal employees have been told they're going to have to get the vax, but they have not been told they're going to be fired if they don't. So I'm going to hope for everybody's sake that that winds up not happening in the real world. However, I am very comfortable in saying that I've never, fi never filed suit against a, a president, and I'm not above it, and I think that I've got support for it. Presidents are not monarchs, just like governors aren't monarchs. And you can't simply say, everybody's got to do it my way for no particular reason, especially when there's no exemptions. For, for anything. And that's one of the questions that you're, if you come to me, I'm going to say, do you know anybody who's got an exemption or is it just playing like they've got? I can tell you that a number of large employers that I would not have expected have been reasonable about exemptions. Okay. I, I have been pleasantly pleased to see that. So, uh, but I would not be the first person to ask. I would wait till a number of people are asking and I would make sure that the, that the employer knows that a number of people are concerned enough that they you may lose good people. Um, there, there are county commissioners uh, who are fooled. And, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to back up just a minute. Although the legal, anybody who's taken the time to look at the legal background on this knows what the answer is. There are a lot of people who are honestly fooled and really do believe that masks help because they are they're they don't have the information in front of them. And what your goal should be is to help them understand that you should recognize and tell them, look, Sweden, 1.9 million minors. They had 65 or 69 people that were younger than 18 that died of various things one year. And the year of COVID is the same number. None of them died of COVID. You need to make that very clear. And when they say, yeah, but you're spreading it to teachers, you have to go back to Finland and say, no, Finland had the same experience as with teachers catching COVID 
as Sweden and Finland was closed. No real difference here. The, the kids are okay, as the song goes. So you need to, you need to let them focus on education. Uh, what else I saw there? Um, the religious exemptions. Um, I think that religious exemptions are absolutely valid. I know that there are some religious leaders that are saying that they're not valid. Uh, those people are simply misinformed. Uh, number one, you don't get to tell somebody else what their what their religious exemption is. The question will always be, is this the first vaccine you've had an exemption you, you felt religious issue about? And the answer may be yes, because in, when you were a child, you never had a real say in it. And only recently have you realized that, that uh, aborted fetal tissue is used. Uh, maybe you've learned that this vaccine is not a normal vaccine. We are not in a normal vaccine. You are doing a scientific thing and that you're, you're introducing the virus in a way so that the body responds uh, well to it and it's armed for, the, for when it gets hit again. And, and the, the current viruses, the vaccines that we have available to us, um, uh, which is not the same thing that they have in all other countries, but it, it's not a normal vaccine. Uh, you are building something new. Uh, in the body that is a kind of a chimera. And you'll remember the chimera from, from myth. It's a combination of different animals. We are teaching the body to do something that it doesn't normally do. Uh, and it's not natural in the same way that a vaccine, a, nander, a normal vaccine is. Um, and I, I barely understand these, well, these things well enough to know that, now that looks weird when I see the pictures of it. But it's absolutely valid to say that you don't wanna be, uh, participate in, in these uh, these kinds of vaccines when they are not normal and they're they're built on dead babies. Um, what else can I tell you? I think that's it. I hope this was somewhat useful. Um, remember the 28th, we're going to have a, ga a gathering on that in Caps Park. And uh, until next time, uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure I turn this off. Isn't that cool?